This man saw a homeless man struggling, so he did this. Homelessness is a growing problem, one that sees all too many people struggling to make ends meet. Even worse is that the homeless often get mistreated and abused. Here we have a story of a man who came across a homeless man, and the actions that he took next will leave you in utter shock and disbelief. David had once lived a life many would envy with a successful career, a loving family, and a home that was a testament to his accomplishments. However, as the wheel of fortune turned, a series of unfortunate financial decisions led to his downfall. The market crashed and his investments soured, and before he knew it, David found himself without a home, estranged from his family, wandering the streets of San Diego. The city, known for its beautiful beaches and affluent communities, also harbored a less visible, more troubling aspect of society, the homelessness crisis. David, now a part of this invisible community, moved from one camp to another, seeking warmth and safety in a world that seemed to have forgotten him. The dangers of living on the streets were all too real, with crime and violence lurking around every corner. Despite these challenges, David maintained a cautious optimism, hoping for a turn in his luck. One evening, as David settled under an overpass with a group of fellow homeless individuals to hide from the pouring rain, he met Bob. Bob appeared friendly, with a rugged face that told stories of hard times. The two struck up a conversation, sharing their experiences of life on the streets. It's tough out there, isn't it? Bob began, his voice rough from the cold night air. David nodded. Yeah, every day's a fight for survival, but you learn to appreciate the little things like a warm meal or a safe place to sleep. I hear you, Bob replied. It's the uncertainty that gets to me the most, not knowing where your next meal will come from or if you'll find a safe spot to rest your head. I used to have it all, a family, David sighed, a home. Now I'm just grateful for making it through another day, he said as he hung up his pants to dry near the garbage can that a fire had been lit in for warmth as they had gotten soaked in the rain. As the night grew colder, the conversation dwindled and the exhaustion began to set in. David, feeling somewhat comforted by the camaraderie, allowed himself to drift off to sleep, believing his few possessions were safe among those who shared his plight. However, as the first light of dawn crept under the overpass, David awoke with a startling realization. His backpack, which contained his food and water, was missing. Even the pants he'd hung up to dry were gone. In a panic, he searched the area, but it was clear. Bob had taken advantage of his vulnerability and stolen everything David had left. The shock of the betrayal hit David hard. Tears welled up in his eyes as he sat there, alone and destitute. The despair of losing his last possessions, combined with the harsh reality of his situation, overwhelmed him. He cried not just for the loss of his belongings, but for the loss of trust, of hope, and the stark reminder of how far he'd fallen from the life he once knew. But as David's tears began to dry, a flicker of resilience sparked within him. He realized that despite this setback, he had survived worse. He remembered the strength that had carried him through the loss of his former life, the estrangement from his family and the hardships of living on the streets. This resilience, born out of necessity and survival, bolstered his resolve. Determined not to let this incident define him, David stood up, wiped away his tears, and started to plan his next move. He knew he couldn't retrieve what was stolen, but he could rebuild piece by piece. The first step was to find food and water, and then to look for a pair of pants, perhaps from a local charity or shelter. As he walked towards the city, the sun rising above the horizon, David felt a renewed sense of purpose. He knew the road ahead would be fraught with challenges, but he also knew he possessed the strength to face them. The betrayal by Bob had been a harsh lesson, but it also reminded David of his own resilience and the importance of cautious trust. Daniel and Monica Richards lived in a cozy, well-kept home in a quiet neighborhood of San Diego, far removed from the struggles and hardships faced by those like David on the city streets. They were very spiritual people who always liked helping others. One evening, as they sat in their living room reflecting on their day, the conversation naturally drifted toward their faith and the role it played in their lives. Monica, do you ever just stop and think about how good the world has been to us? Daniel began, his voice soft but filled with emotion. Monica smiled, taking his hand in hers. Every day, Daniel, the life we live is a truly cherished one. Daniel nodded, his thoughts turning towards their community. I was thinking about today and how we were talking about the joys of helping others. Monica's eyes lit up with understanding. Yes, I've been feeling the same way. There's so much need out there, so many people hurting and alone. We have the means to make a difference, even if it's just in one person's life at a time. The couple sat in thoughtful silence for a moment before Daniel spoke again. What if we made a promise to each other, Monica? A promise to reach out and help at least one person in need every single day. It doesn't have to be something big. Daniel's face broke into a wide smile, inspired by Monica's enthusiasm. It's a promise then, we'll start tomorrow. We'll look for opportunities to help those in need, to listen, to offer a meal, clothing, or even just a kind word. Monica nodded, her spirit uplifted by their commitment. 
and let's hope for guidance from the universe, a sign that'll tell us how we can help those in need. The couple ended their evening with a newfound sense of altruism, and they hoped that they could make a difference in the lives of the less fortunate one day at a time. Little did they know their path would soon cross with someone like David, offering them the chance to live out their promise in a way they hadn't anticipated. On a crisp Friday night, Daniel and Monica Richards were making their way home from a local Italian eatery, a favorite spot of theirs for occasional dinners out. The night air was cool, carrying the promise of a peaceful weekend ahead. However, as they walked past a nearby bus stop, their attention was drawn to a figure huddled in the shadows. It was a man looking wary and worn, clearly in need of assistance. This man was David. Daniel, ever observant of those in need, nudged Monica gently, nodding towards David. Monica, look, he whispered, his heart already reaching out to the stranger. Monica's eyes softened as she took in the sight. We should help him, Daniel. Approaching David cautiously, not wanting to startle him, Daniel greeted him with a warm smile. Good evening, sir. It's quite cold tonight. Are you okay? David, surprised by the sudden company, looked up, a mix of pride and weariness in his eyes. I'm fine, thank you. Just resting a bit, he replied, his voice barely above a whisper. Monica stepped forward, offering a friendly smile. We just had dinner and some leftovers. Would you like them and maybe some water? David hesitated, his pride battling with his evident need. No, no, I can't accept that. Thank you, though. Daniel, sensing David's reluctance, tried a different approach. We insist, it's no trouble at all, plus we have a little extra cash that could help you out. But David shook his head, stubborn in his refusal. Really, I'm okay, you've been kind, but I can't. The refusal sparked a hint of frustration in Daniel. Why must you refuse our help? We're just trying to do what's right, what our Lord and Savior would want us to do. Monica, trying to keep the peace, added softly, We just want to help, David. Please let us. The back and forth continued for a few more minutes, with David steadfast in his refusal and Daniel and Monica becoming increasingly upset at his reluctance. Finally, realizing he had little choice and touched by their genuine concern, David relented with a sigh. All right, I thank you. It's, uh, it's been tough, he admitted, a mix of gratitude and defeat in his voice. Relieved, Daniel and Monica quickly gave him $50, their untouched leftovers, and some bottles of water they had in the car. But then, noticing David's shivering form and inadequate clothing, Daniel contemplated how to provide him further assistance. Suddenly, Daniel had an idea. Monica, I'm going to give him my pants. It's a short drive home and I can manage. Monica's eyes widened in disbelief. Daniel, are you sure that's quite a sacrifice? It's nothing at all to help someone in need. As Daniel started to remove in pants, Monica, still in shock, couldn't help but pull out her phone, capturing the moment. I can't believe you're doing this, Daniel. Turning to David, Daniel offered his pants. Here, take these. You need them more than I do. David, overwhelmed by the gesture, initially refused. No, no, I can't accept your pants. That's too much. Daniel, now in his undershorts and undeterred, insisted, Please, David, it's cold and you're in need. Accept them as a gift from someone who cares. David, shivering and recognizing the sincerity and warmth in Daniel's offer, finally accepted the pants. Thank you, truly. I don't know what to say. Monica, Witnessing the exchange felt a mix of pride and astonishment at her husband's selflessness. Daniel, you're an incredible example of living by your word. I'm so proud. As they prepared to leave, Daniel in his undershorts and Monica with her coat wrapped around him, they offered David a final smile. Take care, David. Remember, there are always people who care, Daniel said. David nodded, a newfound hope kindling within him. Thank you both. Bless you. And with that, Daniel and Monica walked back to their car hearts full, knowing they had made a difference in one man's life that night. In the weeks following their encounter, David's life took a turn that seemed almost miraculous. The generosity of Daniel and Monica had ignited a spark of hope within him, a spark that grew into a flame of determination and resilience. With the $50 they gave him, David purchased a decent secondhand suit, an investment that would open the first door to his new life. Clad in his newfound dignity, he walked into a job interview with a confidence he hadn't felt in years. The interview had led to a job offer as a cashier, a modest but honest position that marked the beginning of his recovery from homelessness. With steady income, David was able to rent a room in a house, providing him with the stability and comfort he had longed for. Though he was far from wealthy, the contrast between his past life on the streets and his current situation felt like night and day. One Sunday, feeling a deep sense of gratitude and the need to express his thanks, David made his way to Daniel's place of work. David sat quietly in the waiting room and waited for Daniel to finish. Once Daniel came out from behind the counter, David was overwhelmed with emotion. Daniel, I, I can't thank you and Monica enough for what you've done for me. You changed my life. Because of your kindness, I found the strength to start over. I have a job now, a place to live. 
I'm not sure where I'd be without your help. Daniel, visibly moved by David's words, quickly embraced him. David, my friend, we're just glad to see you're doing well. David nodded, wiping away his tears. I know, but I'll never forget that. I just wanted to come here and tell you in person how grateful I am. Daniel placed a hand on David's shoulder, giving it a reassuring squeeze. You're always welcome here, David. And remember, it's a testament to your own strength and faith that you've come this far. As they parted ways that day, David felt a renewed sense of purpose and faith in the kindness of strangers who had become his angels in disguise. Daniel and Monica, humbled by David's gratitude, were reminded once again of the profound impact simple acts of kindness can have on a person's life. If stories of godly love and altruism warm your heart, keep coming back for more.